Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we have a great privilege to talk today about different types of the energies and recovery and all of that stuff, you know. Exactly. Seven. Who knew there were seven different types of rest? <laughs> uh, good evening to Finland, my darling. <laughs> White summer. White I love that we have folks it's joining now, it's us. It's a fucking long night, you know, in Finland. I can imagine. Guys, if you can put in comments yes. that you can see us and hear us, I will check it. You know, I see uh, here on the, we are already on YouTube and I will see. Who yeah, is and we, I have to say, we did have some trouble with LinkedIn the last few times. So I'm fingers crossed right. that it works. Yeah. Video comes yeah, across, yeah, sound yeah. comes across. We've been trying to talk to them behind the scenes and work the systems to make sure that it comes across smoothly for you. If not, join us on YouTube. <laughs> no, no, no. There are 15 people on LinkedIn already, so it, it should be okay. Perfect. So if you, yes, it's working. Antonin, Petra, Helas, it's okay. Et voila. Okay, dogs, so let's, guys, let's start. Let's not lose anything. I was telling uh, Lisa, I have my, uh, you know, lovely daughter at home. She arrived from London and she disconnected my PC. I wanted to do it outside of my, you know, house, but unfortunately I'm still sitting. It's uh, relatively hot here. But anyway, so Lisa, kick it off. You know, what are we going to talk about today? I would love to, and I want to kick it off by saying I have to apologize. I obviously did not take good enough care of myself and had to rest because I had COVID this week and I'm still recovering. So if you hear a weird cough or a, you know, time. weird. It's, a, it's second time COVID already, right, for you? Um, Questionable. No. I think I had it in February, 2020, okay. before you could test. I see. Um, so I'm glad that we are virtual for this one, but I will say this goes to show how important our topic is here today, which is that there are seven seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven types of rest. And most of us couldn't even name all those seven, let alone are we making sure that we have all seven types in our life. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's, you know, clear the field right here and now, if it's okay for you, Jan, I'm just gonna introduce them so everybody at least knows what sure. are the seven types. The first one you already know, by the way, this is a great book called Sacred Rest, Recover Your Life, yeah, Renew a, Your Energy, a, and Restore summary. Your Sabbath. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Perfect. Dr. Sandra great. Dalton yeah. Smith. So she was, she was a doctor. She had burnout, young kids, couldn't figure out. I'm getting enough physical rest, which is rest number one. I'm sleeping, right? So what's going on? Why am I still so tired? Why am I still so burnt out? Well, first of all, even with physical rest, there are two components. One is that um, like passive where you're sleeping, you're napping, you're laying, but there's also active. Are you doing yoga? Are you doing foam rollers? You know, are you getting physical? Uh, recovery. And you know this, by the way, if at the end of the day, your shoulders are hunched, your lower back is hurting, your legs are swollen, this is all signs that you're not getting enough physical rest. But there's more because that's only the first. Number two is then mental rest. Jan and I have talked about this so often, right? Jan was in peak physical condition. And what happened? Right? Jan's story, I think everybody cool. knows this now. Yeah. You know, I ended up going to the mental hospital to get taken care of because the mental rest wasn't there. How do you know if your mental rest is there? When you're laying in bed, how long does it take you to fall asleep? Here's a big clue, guys. If it takes you one to three minutes, you're physically exhausted. You're not getting enough physical rest. If it takes you much longer, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes because your mind is spinning, you're not getting enough mental rest. So you can see the difference. If you notice when you go into the grocery store and you said, oh, I needed eggs, butter, milk, you walk in, what, what did I come here for? What am I doing? How, what? If you can't remember three little things on your list, your mental load is too heavy. So that's a good, cheap little trick to know, am I getting enough mental rest? Now, number three, ooh, this is gonna be controversial, social rest. 
so many of us are givers when it comes to being social. We want to know how are you? We're checking in what's going on in your life. I was asking Jan, how is it with your daughter visiting? Is it fun? How was it when you were going to Spain and giving some talks, right? At some point, if you're giving, if you're giving advice, you're there for a friend who's going for a divorce, you're there uh, giving advice to a friend who's a manager, you need a break. How much of the social relationships are you taking on for yourself? This is an important question, ladies, I'm looking at you. Parents, I'm looking at you because you think I go home to have social rest, but then your kids want something and your partner wants something and your mom wants something. You don't actually have social rest necessarily at home. The fourth one, spiritual rest. Do you actually wake up every day and know what I do makes a difference? And by the way, makes a difference to someone other than me, numero uno, right? If it's beyond the ego, am I, am I helping the environment? Am I helping the people around me? Am I helping my community? Do I belong to something greater than myself? Because you can have the best high paying job, the best relationships in the world at some point, if there's no meaning to what you do, you will feel burnout, tired, loss of motivation. So you need to make sure you're recovering and finding spiritual places to re-energize and recover. Number five, this is one I give to people so often now and they go, oh my God, I've never thought or heard about this before. Sensory rest. You don't notice this yet. So much visually is coming in. The sounds are coming in. You're getting advertisements. You're walking through the airport. You hear the noise of the people around you. You see flashing lights. You see an advertisement. You hear a, you know, a, one of these driving things going by. I mean, it's overwhelming. How many times during your day do you actually sit and just close your eyes? Not to nap, not to sleep to just stop having inputs. I actually sent a client fairly recently a nice set of noise canceling headphones. Going back to the office is a lot of sensory overload. Noise cancel your space, lower how much sensory is coming in, and then you won't have, uh, you'll have that sensory rest, you won't have the overload. Emotional rest. Listen again, emotional rest is actually about how authentic you get to be. So for example, we're talking about senior leadership. Uh, lots of companies are going through restructures, mergers, acquisitions, and you as the leader, woo, this is great. I have to toe the party line. I'm so proud we can do this. We can make it forward. And then in your coaching session with me, you're actually saying, I'm quite sad. Colleagues are leaving. There's a lot of uncertainty. The people left are confused but you have to show up and show a brave face. So you might not be getting enough emotional rest. And the last one, creative rest. How many of you are making the time and the effort to just have something beautiful in your life? This sounds like, oh my God, Lisa, what are you talking about? That's not a form of rest, but it is because it's a creative inspirational. It could be music. It could be, I don't know, dancing. It could be artwork. It could be you painting. This weekend I went to Art Basel because there's so many amazing emerging artists and I just wanted to, you know, have my cup filled with inspiration and new ideas. You see, I have a, my daughter's painting in the background here. Fill your life with some beauty elements. Could be going out for a, a walk in nature, but there's something that needs to be visually creative and beautiful and fulfilling for you. So seven different types of rest. Now the question is for all of you who are watching along, how many of you are actively making sure all seven of these elements are built into your life? And Jan, I would love to hear from you. What do you think? What stood out for you from those seven? Or what do you find the easiest or the most difficult? Well, for me, I you know, if I would make some score for like my Microsoft, you know, uh, uh, career, okay. I would say like the physical, you know, I was fine. I, I would say mental, I was very bad. I was working all the time. And the same with the sensory. 
creative was okay, emotional was probably okay, social was okay, and spiritual was also good. All right. But what I what I try to say, I mean, in all Greece, this is more granular, and I like it. In all Greece, they talk about four energies: physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. They call it kalokagatia. That doesn't matter. More or less, it shows that you know, mind, body is important. Mind is connected with the body through emotions, mm-hmm. obviously, and spirit is about your meaning in your life. And as rightly Lisa said. And, you know, spiritual uh, energy is really about, like, be yourself, you know, be authentic, live your, you know, own purpose, if you will, you know, based on your own, you know, authentic uh, talents, right? So that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the rating. Now, why I believe it's important to use those energies and renew those energies or they have a mental rest, I mean, we, we can talk about the mental energy and mental rest. It doesn't matter, right? It's like renewal, right? Yes. Because today, as Lisa rightly said, we are under the huge pressure, <laughs> okay? And, you know, if you if you think about it, in one week, your brain needs to process as much as information as, as the brains of our predecessors 100 years ago for the whole life. So there is a, there is a huge pressure. If you take, for example, our, you know, uh, senses, our sensors, which are key, our sense, our senses are key to pay attention, basically, because if your senses, if you are not like sharp, sharply focused, you are making a lot of mistakes, whether those are mental mistakes or physical mistakes, because as you know, I, I coach many, you know, top athletes, in fact, I'm, you know, leaving to or oh, day after the tomorrow for Wimbledon to coach, you know, Yeri Lahetska, the, the, the Czech player wow. who's 77 on the on the top 100. So, uh, but anyway, so, you know, the, the sensory rest is really important because we are under the huge, you know, pressure. So I may give you a couple of tips and tricks what you can do, like for sensory rest, because... 70 percent is usually eyes okay so your eyes especially if you have like discussion through you know the screen uh uh you know zoom or microsoft teams or whatever you know your eyes are getting really tired okay so it's good to take after 45 60 minutes what they call panoramatic view you go outside or you open the window and you go through panorama you know through you know your eyes a couple of times you know right you have a you have a or you can close your eyes you know right that the, the this is it the other thing what what we know if as Lisa rightly said sleeping is great but sleeping is not enough because you can have like eight hours sleep right but if it's not quality sleep it's quite bad so i'm using you know there are a lot of variables i'm using aura ring uh that's from finland so i think you know mika will be happy <laughs> And the aura, aura ring, it's like application. It's the it's basically sensing, you know, what what's going on with your body during the sleep and, and during the day. And it's giving you some tips and tricks what you should do when you are, you know, ready, when you are, you know, less ready and so on. Okay. Now on uh, on sleep, you know, right? Sleep is important not only for your body but also for your mind and for learning. Because if you learn something, for example, if you follow what we are saying now, you know, it goes directly to your short-term memory. In order to create synapses in your long-term memory, you need to have a good amount of deep sleep, basically, which is happening. Well, we we sleep in 90 minutes, you know, kind of the chunks. It's like deep, uh, you know, shallow, and obviously REM, which is a rapid eye movement. That's when we are having dreams. Okay. Be- say between 10 to 1, 1 30, there's a lot of, you know, deep sleep. So you need to have a good sleep before the midnight or after the midnight. If you go to the bed at 2 or 3 o'clock, uh, you are, you, your body will not have a rest, but you will not remember anything from your training or from your job or whatever. So that's uh, uh th- that's another you know uh, that's another piece okay then uh on uh, on like creative rest what what is helping me i love you should guys figure out where is your energy coming from my energy is coming from sea or generally from the water then from the mountains and from the sun okay 
So even if there's a shitty, uh, you know, uh, weather in the morning, I still have some pictures on my phone where I'm like setting up my mind, basically, hey, this yeah. is it, you know, right? So it's even like pictures, paintings and stuff like that, because you can, you know, it's called priming in the morning. In the morning, you can really prime uh, your mind. It, it, it's very bad habit if you just take your phone and you will start your to do your emails. That's exactly what your amygdala wants you to do. And then you are done, basically. Your day will go like, hey, this is better, whatever. I'm like, I'm touching my phone nine o'clock. I mean, I'm like uh, downloading some podcast to run or to like walk. They do Nordic walking, but nothing else, you know, right? Yes. So, you know, in the morning, it's up to you and it's up to, it's, it is up to the creating, you know, great habits, great, you know, uh, uh, habits which can help you to create the right, you know, I, I call it mental cocktail. Because if you do imagine, do you have two scenarios? You do something in the morning which is very inspirational, some video, 10, 15 minutes, and you like it because you are inspired. Then endorphin is released, okay? You have everything like, hey, it's according to the plan. So dopamine is, you know, released and you are looking forward for the day. That's one option. The other scenario is somebody will send you email and you will be pissed off. And it goes like, you know, and I know those situations because I was there. It goes like all the, and you, you go, you know, to work and you are like pissed off and you, you a lot of cortisol was released. And this is not good, you know, right? And, and, uh, yeah, you, and I think it's, it, yeah, go, I just go. want to add here, it's really important because I think a lot of us think, oh, we need this mental strength and mental toughness. And that like I hear what you're saying, but that doesn't work for me. But actually, our brains were they work in a very particular way. And what Jan's describing is the way that you can hack your brain and make it work to your advantage. So if you think like, yeah, that doesn't work or that sounds fluffy or that's nice that he does it, but I couldn't because of X, Y, Z. You can, it's the same thing as when you, again, your athletes are preparing in advance and they're visualizing the success. Our brain doesn't know the difference between when you imagine it and when it really happens. So if you wake up in the morning and you imagine this is a great day and you imagine what that beautiful picture, you know, being out in that field, it can literally be as good for our brains as being there. So there's a science behind it. Yeah. yeah, you can absolutely, you can memorize your future. It sounds stupid, yeah. but this is it because everybody's got a memory and everybody's got imagination. And because our brain, I mean, our, the memory part of the brain works like a hard disk, it does, it does not distinguish whether it's true or not. That's, we can, that's why we can visualize. That's why there's a lot of advancement. Uh, advancements in in the in the humankind because th this is it because we are really creative you know people and and obviously uh, we are also curious people curiosity leads to 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 the creativity uh, the other the other element I would like to say that you know business seem to me like lacking behind recovery big time I was. Uh, for two days in Spain, and I, I know one of the best golf courses in Andalusia is, uh, 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 you know, it's like PGA, you know, golf course, and they've got a, there was a company, they've got like large conference, so I spoke about, you know, flow and how, you know, you can build great teams and so on, and after the speech, a lot of people came to me because I shared also my experience with my, you know, depression, they came to me and they said, how, what can we do better in our company, and I said, there's still a huge difference between business and sport. Because in sport, recovery is part of the process. It's part of the performance. If you recover, guys, if you are like uh, Nadal, okay, if you are Rafael Nadal, you go to Wimbledon, okay, you 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 think, hey, I may, you know, win in another Wimbledon, and then I may do like yearly Grand Slam if I'm winning US Open because he did already Australian and, and, uh, and French Open, obviously then you know recovery is as much as important as winning against all you know opponents it, this is it recovery in sport is part of the performance 
Recovery in business, very often we take it as a weakness. I need recovery, so I'm weak, I'm wimpy, I'm not good well, enough. Why all do we do that? Bullshit, all of that bullshit. <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, it's very often driven by the leaders because you are leading by example. If you are there till 10 o'clock in the evening, you have no recovery time, whatever, and uh, guess what the people people will follow you you know that's but it, it's not necessarily you know nice right so uh, yeah okay. so but we, we should do definitely and people would perform even better if they would in business if they would have enough time to recover it's illusion to think more i will work better results i will have i'm what i'm saying more i will work and more i will have recovery time and i will be more productive that's the way you know to succeed absolutely absolutely the more you work the more your brain is just in that doing 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 mode and you can't like zoom out see the big picture look at the strategy have a sense see where the team is lacking because you're so in just doing 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 you're so tired 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 get it done that you actually end up doing a lot of work that doesn't need to be done because you end up making a change later or a decision later or you end up doing it really crappy and you have to fix it later <laughs> I agree. Much better to have the recover, zoom out, be too strategic. That's why everyone who gets coaching actually says, oh, I'm so busy. I take this one hour and all of a sudden I have so much clarity. It makes the rest of my week that much easier to get through and get really solid results. Well, that one hour produced this much productivity. Imagine what you could be doing on your own, right? <laughs> Uh, your guys, especially like your physical energy is finite every day. You can know, I mean, you can, there are people who can do like five marathons a day, but normal people can do Not one. Me. Two, two, okay. <laughs> so, and that's the same with your, you know, mental energy. Your mental energy is finite. That's why you need to have recovery. And it's good to have even recovery during the day. A lot of people are like sitting, hey, I need to finish, you know, my work, whatever. It's stupid. Our brains don't don't mind. We don't know exactly why, uh, but our brains like to work in 90 minutes chunks and then to have a break, like 15, 20 minutes to go outside, do some breathing exercise and clean your, you know, brain basically, right? Return back and then then you can, you know, continue. Uh, this is it. But if you work so many hours, uh, you are not very productive. That's for that, that that's for sure. You know, right? Uh, this is this is unfortunately not the case, right? And yes. as I said today, our brains are still the same like the brains of our predecessors a couple of centuries ago. We just have much more, you know, pressure on us. And we think, I tell you what, the problem with amygdala was like protecting our, you know, predecessors. Like, hey, you know, fight, flee, freeze. There, there was some danger. Today, there was a very little natural stress. We are creating stress on our own. And for amygdala, everything is urgent. And amygdala is never logic, okay? Amygdala is showing you where, what can go you know, wrong, but there are no like solutions, fight, flee, or freeze. There's no logical solution. So, I mean, more you will think like logically, hey, is this really, I mean, the one question which helped me a lot, when I've got a, so many tasks on my on my you know shoulder or on my table, I was always asking, "What is one thing, one thing most important now?" Okay, yes. you go back to the present moment. You, you say now, you go to the present moment, you concentrate, and then you can make you know some progress for sure. That's right. <clears throat> We've got quite a few comments here. Why yeah. isn't there a thirty-two hour week and eight weeks of vacation in the companies? Because I can give you that answer because Jan and I sit in on those business strategy meetings. They don't want to add more headcount. They want to continue working with fewer resources. They want to continue to pursue new opportunities because they don't know what will work out, right? So let's just try everything. I'd say the biggest challenge that I see in business is prioritizing, focusing, and saying no to a lot of things. That, that almost nobody does it. But, and so yeah. we're all, we're just doing it. But, but Edward open, you know, uh, Edward open uh, interesting question because he basically is asking, can we be, if we will be smart, can we be as much as productive in 32 hours? Interestingly enough, okay, 
uh, when I was young manager, I was always making jokes. Hey, in France, you know, they don't have like 42 hours, you know, a week. It's like socialistic. But in France, productivity per hour is higher than in the United States. Productivity per hour. We could be talking over. It. So the question is, if we will have, a, you know, less hours and work, you know, more productively, uh, can we have the same, you know, output? That's number one. Number two, I, yeah. I still, I still think we still measure progress around the world by the G GDP, and it's a very, you know, outdated measurement, you know, because it's a global world, you know, right, and so on. And you know, can we grow maybe a little bit, you know, less the economy and have more fun, you know, right? Because in some countries, <laughs> no. in Bhutan, in Bhutan, they have a global uh, happiness product or whatever. whatever. Exactly. They, I don't know. This is just you know from the top of my head, obviously. But uh, yeah, this is it because I believe that you can, you can, you know, if you work as, as uh, you know. I mean, as uh, as uh, mention it, you can work smart, you know, not hard without efficiency, and also how to slow down at the right time to keep high performance constantly. Yeah, this is and I it. Was, yeah, and I think it's really important to note here: there are a lot of cities, counties, you know, um, companies who are trying out what's it like to have a thirty-two hour work week. And they're doing those studies to check on productivity because they know the way that we're going towards burnout. Almost every single person that I coach, not that they come to coaching for burnout, but they're at the edge. Everyone says to me, I'm basically pre-burnout. That's just normal in corporate business at the moment Is and forget it in startups, right? So it's just become normal to be in pre-burnout and burnout phases. At some point, we're going to have that backlash and we're starting to see it, that they're doing the research to pull it back, to give more wellness uh, and well-being tips and to figure out ways and to ask managers not to send emails at night or in the, you know. So we're struggling and trying to find what's the right balance here. People are having an awakening that what we're doing isn't sustainable. What they're not yet ready to do is overcome the fear of, but everyone else is working really hard. If I work 32 hours, how are people going to perceive me? That is the leap that we haven't been able to overcome. Yeah, it's a it's a fear of missing out. Absolutely, yeah, that, this is there's a fop of fear of uh, other people' opinion, but this is fear of missing out. You know, right? Because we think, hey, if we will not work that hard then that means, hey, you know, we, we are not part of the group, and it's not true. Clara is saying, see, this is interesting, let's put it there. What always work is that only three hours of sleep are enough for the lead whole evening after the day. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the overall, it is, it is okay if you need to, to work, but the overall thing is, a lot of people thought that if you drink, uh, then you sleep well. It's not true, actually, you know, right? Uh -huh. And uh, no, you, that sleeping is not, you can go like for eight, 10 hours, doesn't matter, but it's not high quality. It's okay to have like one glass before the bed or whatever. But if if, if you drink, you know, heavily, uh, that's uh, that's not good. But, uh, but yeah. I think you can like uh, delete your mind, your thoughts uh, in this uh -huh. way. And I did it many times when I was young. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and the point is so many people will do an up for caffeine in the morning, in the afternoon, throughout the oh, yeah. day, two, three, four, five, and then they can't fall asleep at night. So they need a glass of wine to relax or they need a sleeping pill or something. You're going too high and doing too low. Find the balance, right? Yeah, it is, the, um, it is what we know about uh, caffeine. First, like 50% of the caffeine is gone from your body in first two and a half, three hours. Then, then the other part is staying there eight to nine or nine hours, you know, right? There's a, uh, uh, there's a podcast from, you know, uh, Andrew Huberman, and he talks about it. Because if you have a coffee at four o'clock, you know, 
it can be that you still feel it at uh, around the midnight, you know, right? So and people who say I don't feel it, caffeine doesn't affect me that way. That tells me you're not getting enough mental rest. No, <laughs> no. Good. But here's something really interesting. There are two things that I still really want to make sure that we talk about because people will often say, okay, um, you know, social rest. How do I do that? How do I escape from people? Because here's yeah. the thing that's really important. Social rest, all day you're with colleagues. So you have to act a certain way. You can't just like be yourself. Then you come home and the family has needs, right? And then for most people in business, your free time, you're often doing things like going to networking events, now going to conferences in person again. Exactly. So once again, you're, you're not just sitting and being yourself and being relaxed. You're always putting on your persona, right? Here's professional Lisa. How right. do you just be oh, Lisa? That is the kind of social rest you need. When I ask people, what do you do with your friends for fun? It's like, oh, I barely see my friends. Oh, mm -hmm. I see them once a month and we have a, a night out. Okay, so once a month you're getting social rest where you're with your friends where you can just be and the rest of the month you're doing what? <laughs> So I want you to really reconsider as you're rethinking, do I need to be working 14 hours a day? No. What do I want to fill that time with? A lot of people will just say, I'll stay at home. I'll watch a little more Netflix. I'll get a more physical rest. I will spend time with the family. Please don't forget to add in the social rest where you're with friends, not because there's a purpose, not because it's going to build your career. You don't have to be doing something productive. This is the, the trap people are in. You need just the opposite. You need the unproductive time protected and built into your schedules. Yeah. Well, Mika, Mika is saying, I work for a huge international Finnish company established in 1848 and i immediately recognize what makes them going so long it's it's really it's uh, there are not that many companies you know we're having that history that, that long right it's 1848 I mean. efficiency and care of all employee needs absolutely you know that's uh you have to care about the person uh, absolutely that, that's for sure i think the to be fair to the companies i think a lot of companies are really starting to think about you know mental health and stuff like that but they don't know how to do it you know right because there is like there's a push like you know right. hey we, we need to deliver on the quarter you know we need to and then hey have a you know rest and so on you know right the, the one thing which is quite radical you know what i would if i would be a very powerful man i would say okay let's report to wall street once a year because everybody talks about sustainable business and we still report quarterly, which means we are pushing, pushing. I mean, if it's like the whole year, you know, if you, if, if you play Bundesliga, whatever, football or whatever sport, okay, this is the whole year. There's not like quarterly, you know, winner, right? But this this is like exactly. short -term, short -term, I think this short-termism is running a lot of, you know, stress and stuff like that, right? Yes. Absolutely. Everybody's focused on the short term. We just need to get through today. We just need to get exactly. through this project. We Whatever just need to get through this. Matter, you're... Yeah. But you're in survival mode. Everybody's in survival mode. That's why you're overworked. That's why you're overwhelmed. That's why we're unhappy. That's why spiritual is missing for so many people. I was coaching someone recently and I said to them, I, I feel like I'm not clear on what your purpose in life is or your purpose in your role. And they said, Oh, you know, it's to be a, a good parent. I said, okay, that's a good value. What's your purpose? Uh, uh, you know, I do my job well. Excellence is a really nice value. What's your purpose? What? Had never thought about it or hadn't known what to think about. Didn't even know purpose meant it has to be beyond you know, nothing wrong with this person. It's we're so focused on the short term. We're so focused on the doing, getting done, achieving. We don't stop and look. That's why we don't have the time for the social rest, the creative rest, the, you know, maybe we schedule it in and we pencil it in, but it's not to enjoy. It's just to stop the, the tenseness from the overwork and the overwhelm. We need to have a little bit of happiness like Bhutan has. 
little bit of joy. No, because uh, look, life should not be a race. Life should be adventure. Okay, and there is there is no nothing adventurous if you are like racing all the time. I mean, I like competition. I like races. I mean, I coach many you know top athletes. On the other hand, you know, I'm telling them if you will like what you do, if that that activity will be your purpose, you know, right? You will have also good results. Now we we talk about, you know, I think. A lot of companies are really, you know, uh, producing this fixed mindset. It's all about the results. Okay, it is about the results. But I mean, the best companies, as uh, you know, uh, Mika rightly said, the best companies are those who are taking care of the people, who are taking care of the process, and who are making sure that they, they use best in their people and their people like what they do. Okay. Because if you if you have emotional connection to what you do, then chances are that you will have really long term good results, right? And that's about growth mindset, right? With uh, I mean, uh, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, uh, company or whether it's human being, but if you have that you know mindset only based on the results, I think it's not good, right? Yes, so Edward, and I yeah. love. Yeah, everybody is saying that we are mental food for the week. Thank you very Thank you. much. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let me add on top of that if you were looking for a nice dessert to keep continuing the conversation, because yeah. here's an insight that almost nobody knows, and it's really important. Why or oh why are we often in our mental running, running, running? I have to have mental strength, I have to actually. It's because we're afraid to face the emotional part of us. Mm. I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling jealous. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling stupid. I'm feeling not good enough. I'm feeling irrelevant. I'm feeling, I can't tell you how many people behind closed doors are like, what is this Web3 blockchain crypto NFT? I have no idea what it is, but I sit in meetings and talk about how it's our future strategy. But they can't say that out loud, right? So sure. all the time they're feeling, I'm gonna, someone else is gonna come in and take my role. I'm stupid. I don't get this. I need to get this. Blah, blah, blah. And then instead of looking at those emotions and saying, oh, I'm noticing I'm feeling fear. Let's, why am I feeling fear? What's that about? How might I address that? Then they go, let me mental strength over it. I won't be afraid. I'm the best. But that stuff is still there. So the mental effort it takes for you to go, I'm afraid. No, I'm not afraid. I'm the best. I'm afraid. No, I'm not afraid. I'm the best. You're losing all your mental energy just running away from facing the emotions. And you could just face the emotions and clear them and move on. Yeah, and unfortunately, people think that emotions are somehow wired in your brain. But emotions are created. That's why we you can, you know, rewire your brain and you can, you know, change your emotions, definitely, right? But first, you need to know where you are. Because if you are, for example, jealous of your competitors or somebody else, doesn't matter, you need to realize, hey, this is it, you know. It's, this is perhaps not me because it's your amygdala is doing that, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you should... I mean, I'm for sure with people on this call, you know, you guys sometimes have like feeling I should kill that guy, you know, right? Are you killing somebody? Probably not, you know, right? This, <laughs> we hope not. <laughs> this, this is your amygdala, you know, right? That that feeling doesn't mean, you know, reality. That's the problem with amygdala. Amygdala thinks that everything is fact. And then if you start to believe your monkey is right, then it, there is a definitely a problem. And if you if you try to protect, look, uh, everybody on the call, you can achieve much more in your life than you think you can achieve, because your amygdala is lowering your expectations in your brain to make sure, hey, we play everything safe, Lisa or Jan, to make sure that you you know will be successful, everybody will admire you, right? And this is called imposter syndrome. It doesn't mean that you are like, not you are not underestimating yourself, but you have, you know, you can achieve much more. Uh, but, uh, in your, 
there's something called a negative bias because your amygdala is five to ten times faster than your logical part of the brain. Amygdala is quote quote protecting you to make sure that you will achieve that, you know, right? But this is not, you know, really fancy because then you are in your comfort zone. And all you know, great things are happening out of the comfort zone, right? That's why I'm saying always aim for the moon. If you miss the moon, you are still among the stars, you know, right? Because you don't you don't you you don't know what you can achieve in your life unless you try, you know, right? Unless you try, and maybe for the first time you will not be successful. One thing I learned from Bill Gates, he was saying every no is a beginning of yes. Very rarely my exactly. person would succeed with version one, you know. We've got always version two, or usually version 3.0 was more successful, you know, right? But 1.0, if you if you remember, those of you who are like old like me, remember Windows 2.1. Uh, uh, sorry, 1.0, it was not good version. 2.0, it was good to play cards. <laughs> And then, you know, <laughs> Solitaire. It was already a very uh, good product, but this is it. And it was the same with the other, you know, players there. Right? It's, it's like uh, step by step, but this is it. And, and once you will figure out, hey, this is really, you know, emotion is not, you know, me. If you have some doubts, it doesn't mean that it's reality. Okay, guys, believe me, if you are depressed, you're uh logical part of the brain is gone it's like cut more or less you know right it's not working and your amygdala quote quote is helping you but it's you know putting all shit and saying hey everything is wrong everything is bad and it's not the reality definitely when you recover you will, you will see it's not reality and it, this is it i mean i'm not saying that people normally have a depression but they have s small depressions if they are not successful sometimes they they feel like that okay Yes. I often will talk about this. I say, I notice for myself when I go into victim mode, oh my God, yes. things are happening yes. to me and this is so hard. And I have a really easy mindset trick for that. Yes, this is happening. You have to accept the situation. You don't cry about it. You don't fight it anymore. You just say it is what it is. Now here's one step I can take. Now here's one thing I can do doesn't matter how small you need to get that feeling it's not happening to me yeah. i have the power to do something exactly. when facing this situation and sometimes i will tell people no matter what when someone says this is the worst situation of all time i mean covid hit right worst possible scenario where's there a gift where is there some truth in there that could become an opportunity? Once you see it as a challenge and a problem and you reframe it as an opportunity, you shift your brain, you can get yourself out of the amygdala. Remember, we're talking about hacking your brain. You don't have to believe us that it works. You just have to trust us that it works and do it anyway. Even if you don't believe it's gonna work, do it and you're gonna see it does work. No, I'm, yeah, um, yeah. I do want to make sure. Oh, I just want to make sure with all seven of these rests, we didn't actually tell people, okay, I have seven rests. I'm not resting enough. What do I, what do I do? Where do I start? How do I begin? And Jan, you started it perfectly. I, oftentimes I'll ask people, I'll say, think about it as a circle and a pie, right? Cut into yeah. the seven pieces and on a scale of one to 10, you can say how where are you at with your rest right in each one of these areas you can read it and then you can you can literally draw this out and you can start to see is your circle round is it very small i have no rest is it very big i have lots of rest is it very bumpy is there one two three places where i'm not getting the rest maybe physical yes but creative no start with where you see your biggest deficit Start with where you see the biggest challenge, where you're not. Don't try to change all seven at once. It's too much. <laughs> but will, if you go step yeah. by step, one by one. Oh, exactly. go ahead. I, I will follow on what Lisa said about the life, life happening to you or happening for you, okay? And here you have like seven, you know, uh, form of the rest, okay? Your life, guys, uh, is not defined by conditions, by environment, whatever. 
your life is defined by your decisions okay by your decisions and you are a decision maker in your life and then it really depends whether your life will happening to you or for you more decisions independent decisions you will make stronger you know person you will become and not all decisions i mean i to be honest look i i tell you what when i was 12 years old i came to the tennis club and the coach said you are too fat you should do sumo and i was ho going home i was like crying but then after one day i recovered and i said nobody will decide and define me it's me my life i will you know decide i will you know define who i am okay and in one year i was the best player in the club and since that time i'm like that i'm i made a lot of bad decisions in my life <laughs> majority were good decisions but still you know it was my decisions okay it was my decisions and more decisions you will make it's about self confidence but it's also also about that life happening you know for you there is a great point yes. from uh, uh, mika good point Jan. most people still consider sustainability as go green only in my opinion social sustainability focusing on the people is the key how to deliver many changes crucial to remember it Rika, yes. i already 10 years ago i started to spoke about the fact that we need to take care of the you know nature and global warming whatever but we should take care of what, what i call human sustainability okay because yes. the human and it was clear already to me that it, people are under the huge you know pressure but unfortunately we are not taking care enough that's number one uh, okay so th there is a huge pressure and you know mental health it's really a big challenge now it it has to do with the fact that there is only 16 percent of the people around the world who are self-actualized which means there's only 16 percent of the people who are doing you know something they really like so majority of the people they hate what they do so there are tons of the cortisol release every day at the workplaces tons of the cortisol okay there's a lot of stress we are then we are you know spending so much money for the healthcare because of the stress you know the stress yeah. we paying the stress is major item in the national budgets today i can i mean i don't have a you know hard numbers but if like 90 percent of all illnesses billions you know, uh, yeah. right uh, are you know driven by the stress this is it so we need definitely to take care of, or not only about the nature which is great but we need to take care about human beings this is it you know absolutely yes. And I'm glad I could bring joy with my nail polish color again. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, uh, yeah. That's, uh, next time, next time. I what I realize, I have some athletes, and they have like on each and every you know finger different color. You know, I will do that. Okay, I, I great. Let, let's let's do that. Well, Jan and I will color coordinate our nail polish. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, anyway, Michal, Michal, my friend Michal is asking are more successful people who experience failure in their life earlier earlier in their life michael definitely in my view uh earlier do you fail better for you <laughs> you know that's for sure you know right which means also it has to do with the fact that if you are a risk taker if you are curious you probably will fail at some point come on you know right and then you recover and you know more but failure we should not i tell you what recently because i have many athletes and they talk about failures and and they were beaten and they they lost and stuff like i said i don't want to hear this okay you win or you learn which means like you win or i'm student you need to change the the mindset i'm the student if you if you are like changing the mindset the key word to me it's it is, it is a student student is an open word you know you are like learning okay i lost i learned you know let's move on right but definitely, Michal, I, I, I would be very much interested uh, about uh, Lisa's opinion. But I think earlier you fail better for you. Yes, Michal, I was just last week giving a presentation to Stanford um, graduate students who are looking about pitching and how do they pitch with confidence. And I said, right, rule number one for pitching with confidence is to reset your expectations. If your expectation is I'm going to work hard and I'm going to get it perfect, then you feel like I failed. 
it's not really about did I fail? If you set your expectation, I said, how many times do you think the average entrepreneur is going to pitch before they actually get a deal? Two, five, 10, 50, 100, I don't know. But let's be realistic. It's your first time running a business. You're not going to get funded the first round. Set your expectation that it's going to take 50 pitches. If it only takes 10, that's great. Absolutely. It's not failure, even though you failed nine times. Because you have to reset and reframe your expectation of what success is going to look like in the end. So Jan, when he was young and his coach said, not going to happen, if he had taken that failure as a truth, then no, having failures earlier on in life would have been more traumatic, would have put him more into protect mode. If he took that as a reinforcement, oh yeah, I'll show you. And then he did it, that reinforced in his mind, you see, when someone says, no, you can do it anyway. So it's not about the failure in and of itself. It's setting the expectation and how you react to the failure, no matter what stage you are in life. Although the younger you are, the more malleable your brain is. I put it in for my daughters all the time. Like, yeah, but the, it's not a failure. That's just part of the process to getting to success. Like, and we don't even call it failure. We just say that's the process yeah. to success. And then that becomes normal for them. And this is the key. It has to feel normalized. It has to feel okay. It can't feel upsetting. It can't, you know, it should just feel like, okay, this is a thing we do on the way to success. Very successful people. I cut out. They hit challenges and then they go, cool. And what's the new opportunity? Cool. And what did I learn? Cool. And how do I pivot on that? Wow. What a creative thing to do. How do I do this? So they don't let the failures hurt them, stop them, or bring them down. That is a that is a huge difference. You can say, I will never be there, or I will never be that good. Or you may say, I'm not there yet. It's a very different. If you are saying, you know, I will never be there, it's fixed mindset. I'm not there yet. It's a growth mindset. You are making some progress. You are not there yet. Some schools in the US, Lisa, are you there? Now you get you get cut. I can see Lisa on LinkedIn moving, but not. Okay. Lisa, are you there? Are you there, Lisa? Uh, uh, we have a thunderstorm happening now. And yeah, so we have a thunderstorm, and I live in the countryside. So as soon as the weather goes bad, the internet goes. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> on the on the LinkedIn, you are moving, you know, on the on the stream. That's okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah, okay, some... slowly but surely. Okay. Well, slowly, don't worry. We have like seven minutes to go. <laughs> there was a huge when I was flying uh, to Barcelona. There was a huge thunderstorm, like two hundred kilometers. We were already descending. Don't it was like, boom, 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 boom. I was like, oh okay. man, it was. Don't anyway, tell me this. Yeah, it's like my biggest fear. From these days, you know, absolutely. Anyway, so there are schools in the U.S. Instead of the fail, they are using not yet. Yeah. Which is which is quite you know interesting. And I can tell you, my daughter, who is in second grade, and by the way, in Switzerland, they don't take tests until third grade. So she's taking okay. her first set of tests in second grade to know what it will be like in third grade. And she had a, a math test today. Okay. And what are the questions that I asked, right? I asked her, hey, what, what felt hard for you while you were doing that? What felt easy for you? What felt fun for you yeah. about that? And then when we'll get the results back, it won't be what was your grade? How did you do? We're just going to talk through it. Oh, what was the best part of that? What was, you know, what was the experience like? What are you curious now to learn sure. going forward? And it's a conversation. It's not a grade. And this is what's missing from school children, but also in the workplace. It's not a you did bad or good. It's not an evaluation. It's not a right or wrong. It's a never ending infinite cycle of learning. Absolutely. So why give a grade on it? We just talk about what are you curious about for the next time? What are we looking at for the next time exactly. and the next time? It's a process. So 
ACDC is playing for Lisa tonight. <laughs> they, they, they must Just for me. Like, uh, they must be like eight years old, I think, ACDC, right? you know. <laughs> I, but I was, still rocking. They must do their seven rests pretty well. Say, I don't yeah, know. Absolutely. I think they, oh, wow. there's something, you know, interesting they do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we got to study them. Uh, but absolutely. I'm curious, as we're wrapping up today, is there anything else from those of you who are attending live that you want to know about how to implement or any maybe, of these maybe seven rests some, or your stuff? Maybe some techniques for the rest you guys are yes. doing to share with the others, you know, right? Yes, I love that. Do, so do, one do, of the... Yeah, the one thing I, I would mention, which is really helping me a lot, it's Wim Hof, which is like cold water and breathing technique. And it's it's good for your immunity, but it's great for mental energy and emotional energy. It's really, you know, good. Even like in the morning, if you are like, hey, you know, I'm tired or whatever, and you, you get this, you know, cold shower and, the, and the, the breathing exercise, it's great. Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> Michal's uh, also experiencing Michal, this. Michal is close. Yeah, he's uh, I, close to Zurich. I uh, hope Horgan is a little more civilized than where we live. <laughs> I, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> one thing I do want to say, I'll give you a perfect example. I went to a networking conference last Thursday and Friday, but instead of going in, I have to uh, impress. I have to show up a certain way. I have to get business. What I did is I said, I'm going to make this a social rest. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. look at this as like a nice, fun getaway weekend. Happens to be with some great and interesting people. I can have some interesting intellectual conversations. I didn't even bring business cards. But because I was there, relaxed, ready, I right. was recovering. I was open to connecting. Well, I met, you know, two, three women who just were standout connections for me. I don't need to meet a hundred people, right? I need to yeah. meet two or three. And one of the women that I connected with is Nelson Mandela's granddaughter. And I was talking to her because I said, Africa lately has been calling me. I've never been. I have no idea why. Something about Africa is like, Lisa, you need to come. And I said, it's, it's fate that I've met you. And I would really like, can I give you a call when I come and visit? And she's like, yeah, sure, give me a call. So I'm like, so now I have, her name is Swati Mandela. She does amazing work on bringing women's voices out. So I'm like, how can I get there? How can I support your mission? How can I go to South Africa and experience it the way Nelson Mandela's it's granddaughter great. would get there? And that's what you get when you stop forcing it and you show up with a resting mindset to all that you do. No, look, when I was young, it was always like, hey, you know, how many business cards can I, you know, exchange? And it's like, at the end of the day, you are not able to be in touch with those people. So you need to be very picky. What do you want to achieve? You know, right? And is it is the same like right now, uh, rather people approaching, like if I speak somewhere, people like approaching, you know, me, it's the same thing. I cannot, there's like 100 people sometimes in the line. I cannot, you know, answer all questions. I try to answer as, as much as I can. I give them, hey, there is a business card. You can you write me whatever. Uh, but but this is it. Because if you are interested, it's, Af it's Africa. There's definitely uh, there is a granddaughter of Nelson Mandela. That's the that's the right, you know, contact definitely. Exactly. It, it, but it what because you you should you know like figure out in your life there will be a lot of people and a lot of interests and a lot of books. But life is short. You are not able to make happy everybody, okay? And it's no. your life. Your, you know, I mean, it's good to make, you know, happy other people through something you love, you know, but it doesn't need to be necessary on one-on-one -on -one basis. That's why I try to do, like, you know, live with Lisa and in, in Czech language and there's an online course, whatever, you know, right? But I cannot do it because I'm, I'm getting a lot of requests to coach people on one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, the, 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 the day is having, I still need to get like eight hours, you know, sleep. I do like two, three hours, <laughs> four, you know, every day. So, uh, but anyway, you need to, that. what I'm saying, you need to prioritize basically, right? And you need to prioritize, yes. kind of try to build win-win and you will not make everybody happy, but that's, uh, that's life, you know. 
That's right. Prioritize your rest. Show up with this growth mindset, this abundance mindset. Yep. Show up with the rest mindset. We, Liana and I literally plan our lives around how do we make sure we have these types of rest. And it works out because then you can be at your best. And then you can find the clients or attract the clients or have the clarity to know who do you want to be with. And then you can be more intentional and you can create the life that you want. It's all very simple instead of playing someone else's game and someone else's rules you start prioritizing you and start yeah. with these seven types of rest to really get the best out of Absolutely. yourself and here is my addition you know when i was 50 years old i was as you know deeply depressed for six months and i realized that you know my energy is much more important than the money or the results or whatever because if i will not have energy there are no you know, there are no results. That's, That's why right. like recovery and renewal is really very important because your energy uh, and your health is key. I mean, it, it, it's the base for everything. Unless you have energy and health, uh, there's no way you know to to do whatever you want. You know, right? And and That's and again, you know, recovery it's not weakness recovery is part of the process you know and you should enjoy it you know as much as you enjoy your performance whatever your performance is michael is like scientists and you know uh you should enjoy also recovery because once you will start to enjoy recovery your life will change i can guarantee you yes i'm actually very much looking forward to going to bed right after this phone call yeah <laughs> I still have one. I still have one more tennis player, like junior tennis player. She plays in Wimbledon also, about a week from now. But uh, then, <laughs> okay. Thank Good. you very much. Thanks everyone for joining. Let us know if you have a very particular topic you'd like to talk about, and otherwise, we'll see you again right here in two weeks' time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.